riding my bike around the streets of Los Angeles all the time, and I've never been hit by a car. So I must be doing something right. My friends at Bike Legal, who specialize in car bike collisions, have helped me make this video to tell fellow cyclists and fellow drivers, I have a car too, what I've learned and what to watch out for. Now, motorists, you're in a rush, you're stuck behind us, and I promise you, we don't like it either. I would love to have a bike lane so I could be out of your way, but we usually don't have that option. We're out there because maybe we can't afford a car, or we're trying to save the environment, or we're hopeless addicts to exercise, and we're really, really sorry, I mean it. But however you are in the moment, you're in a huge metal box that could totally kill children, squirrels, middle-aged men in tights, and former pro cyclists. And if you don't feel bad about that last part, remember that the men in tights might have pets or babies or something really cute that would be sad if he got hurt. My point is that you don't want to kill anybody, and I'm here to help. Now, cyclists, you're a little person, often super skinny, with just a foam helmet and this like really flimsy skin holding in your very important organs. So ultimately, you're the one who's vulnerable, and you've got to try to protect yourself as best you can. So this video is a quick guide to the most common collisions and what cars and bikes can do to prevent it. All right. So we're here on San Vicente Boulevard in Brentwood. Uh, this is a spot, there's lots of shops, lots of pedestrians, lots of cars parked, um, and there's a bike lane. So basically, this is a great place to get hit by a car. Crash number one, cross from a car turning left. Now here's how it happens. I'm riding along in this bike lane, and there's a car trying to turn left from the other side. So he's waiting for a gap in the cars. He's not used to looking for bikes in the bike lane. He sees a gap in the cars, and he shoots through it, not knowing that I'm coming up at a different speed in the bike lane and now I'm flat as a pancake. So cyclists, as you're approaching an intersection, don't assume that the guy turning left sees you. Don't assume that he's thinking about your lane. Keep in mind that you could be like obscured behind a truck so he's, he doesn't even see you coming up. Motorists, you've got to keep in mind, when you're making a left turn, even if all the cars are stopped at a red light and you see a gap to make that left turn through them, you've got to keep in mind there could be a cyclist coming up the bike lane, there could be somebody running on the sidewalk, You've got to look at all those lanes of traffic before you make that turn. Also, get off your phone. You got to focus. You got to pay attention when you're driving a car. Crash number two, a car turning right in front of a cyclist. Now here's what happens. A car passes a cyclist and then just makes a right turn before they're fully cleared and the cyclist slams into the side of the car. So cyclists, what you've got to do, every time a car's up next to you, every time a car passes you, whether they have room or not, no matter how crazy you think it would be for them to turn right, you have to assume that they're just about to turn, that they don't see you, they don't know where you are. Uh, they, cars seem to think that once they've passed you, you've disappeared forever, and you've got to take that into account. Motorists, what you've got to do, you just passed a cyclist. They didn't just puff into a, into a cloud of smoke. They're still there. You've got to just wait, give it a couple seconds, let the cyclist pass and go straight, um, don't use your don't try, don't try to fly around the corner. You're saving two seconds. You're, you're burning your tires. I've seen cars make that right turn so fast that they come out on the wrong side of the road and almost hit the head on. It's not worth it. Be a little more patient. And like I said, put your phone down. Put your phone down and pay attention. Crash number three is a car pulling out in front of you. Now here's how it happens in case that's not super obvious. Motorists are accustomed to looking into the lanes and not in the bike lane. They're not used to looking on the sidewalk, they're not used to looking in the bike lane, and they just shoot out right into your path. Now cyclists, here's what you can do. The first thing, I see a lot of cyclists on the wrong side of the road, especially when you first start out. Running, you're supposed to go one way. With cycling, you're supposed to go the main direction of traffic, and this is why. A car looking to turn right will never look to the right. They're only looking at what's coming from that side. And if you're coming down this way, that's actually your fault. Now, if you're in a busy part of the road, generally that makes you safe from this because a car isn't gonna pull into oncoming traffic with cars coming. If you're in an emptier area, I'll actually ride further into the lane when I see a car coming out of a driveway to make sure I'm more visible to him and I'm riding somewhere where he's accustomed to looking before he turns. So as I'm approaching intersection, if I see a car inching out, I'm, I, I monitor my speed, go a little slower, and I'm ready to slam the brakes or swerve around him if he doesn't see me coming. Now, motorists, this is really just a matter of you've just got to look where you're going. My old apartment, I'd have to go up a driveway and I'd have to cross a sidewalk and then an area for parked cars and then a bike lane before I pulled in the street. So each time I'd have to look both ways, 
inch up a little bit, and then look at the next lane of traffic. You've got to pay attention. You've got to look wherever they could possibly be. Uh, check the right side to see if some crazy British tourist is coming down or if there's a police chase. They could come from anywhere. Know your surroundings and put your phone down. Crash number four, the door. Now here's what happens. You're trying to be a good boy and stay out of the way of cars. You're trying to stay as far to the right of the road as possible. So what happens? You're coming too close to this car and he opens the door and you smash into it. So here's what cyclists can do. You want to stay out of the way, but in, in heavy pedestrian areas and spots where there is a lot of street parking, uh, keep in mind that they could open a door. Sometimes it's safer to be a little further into the lane and not too close to the parked cars on the side. Now, I don't usually ride with a bell or a, I don't have a horn, a bullhorn, but uh, if I see a car starting to open their door, I will yell, whoop, that's my horn, whoop, and that works, it'll get their attention. Now, for motorists to prevent this, let me demonstrate something called the Dutch reach. Oh, no, that, that's the Dutch oven. The Dutch reach is where you use your opposite arm to open the door, so that forces you to turn this way, and now you're looking in the direction of the bike lane and oncoming cyclists. So get into this habit, and it could save a cyclist's life. And if you don't care about that, do it to save your nice door. Also, put your phone down. You're sensing a pattern here. The last crash, number five, is when a cyclist just comes out of nowhere and swerves under your car and there was nothing you could do about it and the cyclist dead and you're really sorry but it's not your fault. Oh wait, that's never happened. That is not a thing. Stop saying that's a thing. We're not lemmings. We're humans. We have lives. Nobody wants to, nobody went out for a bike ride and was like, oh, nah, F it, I'm gonna die today and swerve under this bus. That's not how it works. You were on your phone, weren't you? You were on your phone. I was saying get off the phone. I keep telling you get off the phone. Here's the thing. I know that there's people with PhDs that are studying how to, how to reward your brain chemistry for staring at your phone every two seconds. Like I know that's a thing. Hang on. Hang on one second. I got to check my likes. Sorry, what was I saying? Oh yeah, you've got to fight this thing. Listen, when you first get in the car, Turn on your music, turn on your podcast, plug in your, your destination, whatever. And then if you keep catching yourself texting, you know you're not supposed to. I know that you don't want to. You're better than that, but, but you're addicted. You can't stop. So know that about yourself. Toss the phone in the back seat. Toss it in the trunk where you can't get to it and, uh, and just drive. Just do what you're doing. Whatever, whatever's beeping on your phone, whatever your notifications are, whatever texts you got, whatever emails are coming up, I promise it's not worth it. Just wait. It can all wait till you get home. Now, car makers, government, every bit of the car is regulated. You got airbags, you got warning signs everywhere, you got crumple zones. You can't figure this out? Come on! And cyclists, all you can do about this one is raise the uninsured motorist coverage on your auto insurance. So if they hit you when they run away, or if they're not insured, or if they're insured but they're just not insured for enough, that comes out of the uninsured motorist coverage on your auto policy. Give them a call, it's an extra few dollars a year, get that amount raised, it's totally worth it. Now God forbid if any of this does go wrong for you, or if you want more info, check out Bike Legal, there's a link in my description. Thanks for watching, peace, be safe.